24 hours before the new year and before the clock strikes 12, a lot of our tri-state teams were still wrapping up the holiday tournaments. Starting off with the State Farm Classic, Central Southeastern took on Galena and for the championship title, let's go to Bloomington to see how that turned out. This game did not start out the way the Lady Panthers wanted. Galena's Addie Heffel takes it down on the break and this play helped the Pirates build a big lead. In fact, the Lady Panthers were down 24 to 8 and had to dig deep to find answers. It was now or never and down by 16, CSE put up a fight. They jump passes, they attack. Central hit the floor after loose balls and it started to happen. They changed the game before halftime. Brylin Lance hits this bucket. One's down by eight. CSE scored the last eight points of the half. It was 24-16 and Matt Long liked the improvement. He pushed his team to pour it on. Third quarter action. Carly Peters knocks down the three. Central was on a roll. They pass it down to Lauren Miller who gets the easy two. Carly Peters was feeling it this game. Nice drive here in the Lady Panthers. Finally had their first lead of the game, 34 to 32. That's Brylin Lance with a great pass down to Lauren Miller. And the Lady Panthers came down by 16 to win by five. The final score is Central Southeastern 45, Galena 40. And it was a great bounce back effort that powered the Lady Panthers to win. But I thought we were timid, especially through the first quarter, quarter and a half. And we talked about that in the first quarter. They got to every 50-50 ball. They got every rebound they wanted. They got every look at the basket they wanted. And we were timid. They were the aggressor. And if that's, again, if that's who we want to be, then that's fine. Then we own it. But if that's not who we are, then we need to do things, change that perception. And after losing in the semifinals, the Blue Devils bounce back in a big way in the State Farm Classic. Quincy knows the game plan is to get the ball down to Taylor Foey, and she was trouble for Washington. Today, Quincy had a one-two punch going. Nice pass to Jada Brown. Quincy grabbed a 15-10 lead after one quarter. Second quarter action, freshman Miley Longcorn knocks down the three. Quincy led 27 to 20 at the half. And in the third quarter, it's Foey and Brown again teaming up down low. Quincy was up by 10. Jada Brown put on a show today. She scored 22 of her 31 points in the second half. You heard me right, 31 points. And the Blue Devils grabbed their 13th win of the season. The final score, Quincy High 61, Washington 53. And Quincy plays back at home this Thursday as they host Moline. Macomb Western Holiday Tournament is wrapping up after Camp Point Central fell to Macomb in the semifinals. They would take on West Hancock for the third place spot. Let's see how our teams did. Since 2008, the Titans have taken home some hardware from MWHT, but will they be able to do it against Camp Point? They could play in like this. That's Lewis Siegfried behind the arc, knocking in the money ball. When two really good teams play against each other, you know it's going to be a back and forth battle. Nick Moore equalizes the playing field with a three of his own. Now, a few plays later, watch Gage Scott. He's looking like a football player, bodying his defender and snagging the easy deuce. Sticking with Mr. Scott, here he is again from behind the arc. Cha-ching! The Panthers have some ballers on their side of the court, too. They just rock to Duke Pabin. He takes a shot from the corner. Count it. Your final after four, Wes Hancock, 58, Camp Point, 46. Bringing it back to Quincy, the five and six Blazers started their New Year's Classic this evening. John Wood is trying to go above 500 before 2024, and to get there, they had to beat McHenry County. Let's check out the action. In the first half, the Blazers are going to quickly move the ball down low to Jacob Wallingford, who hits a little jumper shot to tie the game at two. Fast forward a little bit later, and Wallingford again getting himself a little buy to get one free deal, drawing the foul. The game remains tied. Kachow Gianquinto pushes the Blazers over the top from behind the arc, and John Wood takes the lead. Former Illini West alum Nolan Dietrich will get in on the action with the three of his own. Boom! It was a close one, but John Wood wins 76-73, to and we'll be back in action tomorrow at 3.30.